What's going on guys? Welcome to your 42nd tutorial, 43rd, 43rd tutorial uh, for Java. And what we're going to learn about today is, you know, some more basic stuff. As you can see, I'm out of the graphic user interface stuff for right now. We'll jump back into that later. But uh, someone emailed me, they want to know what abstraction is and also go over polymorphism a little bit more in detail. So I decided I should do that. Um, quickly because it's more of the basic stuff that most of you guys will be learning in a college course or a high school course. So let's jump into it. Uh, let's talk about abstraction first. Um, basically abstraction or abstract class or abstract method, what they're going to do is pretty much the same thing as a regular method except a little bit more restrictions. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an abstract class so when we create a new class we're going to check this down here, abstract, and that's going to make it an abstract class. And then also what we're going to do is we're just going to say a car. So we're going to hit OK, and as you can see, we have a public abstract class. Now within the abstract class, we can set up our constructor as well. So we can hit control space, enter, and that's our default constructor. So what we're going to do within the default constructor is just the system printout. So we're just going to you know print something. We're just going to print print actually and uh, make it simple. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to try to create a car object and have it print to the screen. So I'm going to go back to our starting point class where we have our public static void main method here and we're going to try and create a new car object. So as always we'll just uh, say the variable type. We're going to call this C. We're going to set this equal to a new car. And the first thing that you notice is we get an error because we aren't allowed to initiate abstract classes and initiate is what we're trying to do here create a new instance of that object um, by calling the default constructor when you're working with abstract classes you're not allowed to do that and you're like okay well then what's the point of this car class what's going to do is it's going to allow us to handle some certain methods that we want every type of car to have so let's create a new class real quick we're going to say you know new class we're going to call this one Toyota or something something like that a Toyota car and within here what we want to do is we want to say extends car so all we're doing is we're saying hey we're creating an object it's going to be a little bit more specific than our super class which is car so car can have some you know default car methods default stuff within there and then Toyota is going to be a little bit more specific so now when we save this what we can do is we can go back to our starting point class and we can say we want to create a new Toyota I'm going to call it T and then just new to Toyota and uh, let's save everything run it and as you can see down here we get our print statement because what it's doing is create a new Toyota object which is basically like a car object because we're extending it and then our car constructor is going to get called and we're going to get this print statement. Now that we know that abstract classes can be used as a super class by extending and we can still access you know the constructor of that abstract class and uh, you know all that stuff but we can't initiate it by calling a car C equals new car. Um, there's other things that we can do with an abstract class you know like set up some methods you know like public uh, you know double miles per gallon and uh, this takes in two doubles as well such as like doubles miles and or double mile and double gallons and all we're gonna do is we're gonna return a double so we're just gonna say uh, return whatever uh, our miles are divided by our gallons so obviously like this method is gonna apply to all cars because they all go a certain mile a certain amount of miles over a certain amount of gallons uh, the miles per gallon so you know this method is going to be accessible to all of our cars whether it be Toyota, Ford, um, whatever so within our Toyota cl class what we can do is we can set up a new constructor as well for a Toyota and then what we can do is we can use that method from the car class so now within our constructor we can set up a double uh, mpg or miles per gallon for a Toyota and we can set this equal to our mpg method from our car class and we can pass in a few parameters like 60.4 miles or 60.3 miles and it took us you know 1.8 gallons or 1.9 gallons and now that's going to return you know whatever 60.3 divided by 1.9 is from our car class so we can still use methods from our car class as long as again our class is extending it uh, extending that abstract class 
we can use the methods from the car class. So that's kind of the basic concept of abstract classes. In the next tutorial, I'll talk about some of the unique features of an abstract class um, that we can use for kind of organization and you know abstract methods is what we're actually going to get into. So make sure you check that out. And again, uh, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing and you know sharing these videos because the more you share them, the more views we get. And we're trying to get onto like the YouTube EDU site for like education and stuff. So uh, again, thanks for all the help that you guys do. And I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks again. Have a good one. <laughs>